Welcome back to the Bordis and Bordis Hotline of the Nightly Sports Call right here on Pittsburgh CW. Bob Pompiani with you until 11 o'clock at 412-575-2600. Lots to get into. We've got some tweets at KD Pomp. Uh, Jason Albert says, look at what the Brewers are doing despite last in payroll in the baseball uh, in MLB. That's true. Uh, they're having a good year. Uh, but they also have some pretty high contracts. They're not afraid to spend. We've seen that before. Uh, and when you see teams like this do well, uh, it gives the Pirates ammunition to say to you, well, listen, you don't have to spend a lot of money. Well, you have to spend more than what you're doing, especially if you have a lot of issues with this team. And there are a lot of issues with this team. Tonight, Ivan Nova got the start, and it was a big bonus night for him. Typically, the Pirates in the past would not have put him out there. They could have used every excuse. We're going to look at young guys because this came with a $750,000 roster bonus, but they gave it to him. He pitched tonight. He's still not the same Ivan Nova as he was at the beginning of the season, and the Pirates lose 4-3. to three. All right, let's go out to the lines. We will begin with Mark in Carrolltown. Hello, Mark. How are you? Good. Good. What's up? Hey, I just want to know, uh, do you think the Pittsburgh Pirates could find any way else to lose? Yeah, tonight was not a good way to lose, but they like, right, what are you going to do? I mean, their, their closer was in there. They didn't get it done. He gave up a double, and then Jordy Mercer muffed what looked like a double play ball, and they end up winning 4-3. to three. It's just one of those years. They're pretty bad right now. Kathy in Johnstown is on uh, Pittsburgh CW. What's up, Kathy? Yeah, I don't know if you can answer this or not, but uh, I'm really upset since AT&T Sportsnet took over Root Sports. Okay. They took off our press conferences on Tuesday from 12 to 1. Do you have any idea what's going on? I was a little surprised by that, and I don't know the reason why, but you're right. All those college teams and then, you know, the Pittsburgh Steelers had a press conference there as well. Um, you know, I was hoping our station here, Pittsburgh CW, could pick it up, and who knows, it still might happen. But at this point, no, I don't have a reason for that. But it is uh, part of the transition they made from Root Sports to AT&T. All right, let's go out to Brad in Duncansville. Hello, Bradley. Hello, Bob. How are you? I'm good. How are you tonight? Good. Good. I have I want to. I have a Steelers score for you and a Penguin question for you. Give me your score. What do you think they're going to do? They're going to win. I'm going to say 34-21 Pittsburgh. Okay. And my Penguin question is for you. Did you? Is this true? What I've been hearing, Riley Sheehan may be on his way to Pittsburgh. Is that true or false? I. I mean, it's out there. Who knows what it's going to end up being? You know, they're trying to look at guys internally now, Brad, uh, and they have some pretty good ones. And Adam Johnson, Teddy Bluger. Uh, Greg McKegg, uh, these are guys who, you know, might be able to just get an opening day spot, and we'll see. Carter Rowney, I, and thanks for the call. Carter Rowney probably is the guy who's going to do your third line centering at this point. They have a lot of wingers. They could still make a trade. Derek Pouliot's playing better. Maybe his stock goes up a little bit. Uh, you know, we'll see. Long way to go, but I don't think Jim Rutherford's in any rush for this whatsoever. But Riley Sheehan is a guy who's coming off a real bad season. It would be a good time to go after him, supposedly, because he's better than what he showed. But at this point, Nothing definitive on that. Let's go out to Judy in Springdale. Hey, Judy, how are you? Okay, I didn't get to go on last week, but I waited. But mm -hmm. Youngstown State won last week, first grandson. He had a touchdown. <laughs> Second grandson won for Slippery Rock. Tonight, the one that's a junior in high school, at Kiski, the third brother, they won, and he had a touchdown. Sounds like you have a good football family, and you're proud of them. You're darn right I am. And I don't go to the games. I sit here and wait for you guys to get on. <laughs> I just shook my finger at you on the telephone, too. What but anyway, you, what I What did you do? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Time. Huh? What did you just say? I didn't hear what you said. I shook my finger at you. I can't stand looking at you and talking in this phone. <laughs> but anyway, well, you got to get a new phone. Three. <laughs> All right, thanks. I appreciate that. Let's go out to Lou in Fox Chapel. What's up, Lou? How are you? Hi, Bob. <laughs> What's what poetic on? justice for Nicasio to be the winning pitcher. But I wanted to compare the ownership of the Pirates with the Steelers and the Penguins. Right. How lucky we are to have owners that are sportsmen that want to win. And maybe you can tell us what the uh, nuttings paid for the Pirates, the enormous profit they're going to get somewhere down the line. Well, that's one of the reasons why, thanks, Lou, why they don't want to sell the, the franchise because it keeps going up. And it's like being in a really nice neighborhood and you have maybe the the worst house in the neighborhood but because of all the houses around you are priced very high your house is worth a lot more than maybe it would be in some other neighborhood but you know hey listen he, he bought the team he owns the team he has every right to do what he wants to do with it but i agree 
number one issue should be trying to win competitively and showing it, backing it up. We've seen that with the Penguins and the Pirates. They both spend to the limit. They both do whatever it takes to win first and foremost, and, and that's what you should expect. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. But I'm going to see this is going to be a very interesting offseason for the Pirates, what they do. They have two ways to go here. If they want to trade McCutcheon and maybe even Cole, maybe they just decide, well, we'll probably try to start this over and, you know, regroup and bring in some more talent into our system. Who knows what they're going to do? But if they keep McCutcheon and keep Cole, uh, then you got to add to them. Uh, you know, Starling Marte has not had a good year. Uh, this is a guy who, in a season where we're going to set a major league record for most home runs collectively by all teams, he's supposed to be someone who can give you a little bit more pop than just six home runs. And I know he missed 80 games. Um, but they need a lot more production out of him and Polanco. Absolutely they do. They need a third baseman. They need more consistency all around. You wonder if Josh Harrison at $10 million is going to be around next year. That's a pretty big, and I think he's worth it, but I also think that they may look at him and say, well, we can get something for him. Who knows? Long way to go here, but it will be an interesting offseason. Mark in Shadyside is next up. Hey, Mark. Mark, you're on the air. Go ahead. All right, Mark, you're not paying attention. I don't have time to wait. Let's go out to Jerry in Mount Lebanon. Hey, Jerry. Uh, it's uh, Terry, Bob. Okay, Terry. Sorry. What's up? Uh, I uh... Um, nice. I'm calling about the uh, Pirates coaching. You know, I, I just wonder, you know, the poor performance they've had coming down the stretch and, uh, you know, the pathetic base running of this team, you know, things that are coachable, and yet, you know, they sign the coach up again. You know, it's like they don't uh, expect to do anything with this team. Well, you know, as much as I, like I said, I have no problem with Clint Hurdle and Neil Huntington as people. I think they're wonderful people. I think they're smart people. I think they know baseball. But if you're looking at it from, a, from some outside perspective of them, you'd say to yourself, okay, they go from, seven, from 98 wins to 78 wins, down 20, and this year it's going to be down even more than that. It may only be 63 or 64 wins, and yet everyone gets four-year extensions. That's not exactly what a lot of teams would do, but that's what the Pirates have chosen to do. Now, the question will be, how much do they change their direction? Are there assurances uh, to these guys that they're going to try to spend more money to bring in more talent. Your coaching, your GM, uh, especially the managing, I mean, it's, you're, you're a victim of what you have, I think. And I don't think there's enough talent on this team. And so that's a result directly to Neil Huntington, who's got to do better in the draft. If you take away top picks, I mean, high-end picks, first overall, top five, there hasn't been much in the way of drafting here at all under 10 years. And that has, if it, you know, you think 10 years, if you haven't had enough sample size that it's good enough, then, you know, you, you wonder how it can justify a new deal. But they make this move. We'll see what they do. But to me, they got to spend more money. They got to go out and get more talent. They got to try to win more. Uh, if you're uncomfortable spending, then get out of it if you don't want to spend. But again, there's no pressure. He owns the team. He's going to do what he wants to do. Uh, let's go out to Brad in Punxsutawney. What's up, Brad? How you doing tonight? Good, Bob. How you doing? Hey, I'm going to make a prediction and then ask you a question. All right. I think Pitt finds a way tomorrow to stop the run, and I think mm -hmm. they win 28-24. And my next question is, I'm one of the few people that uh, have not missed a game in the Narduzzi era. I've been at every home game that they've played, and it just I, I'm just puzzled at the lack of attendance for some of the games that they've drawn. I mean, there were 38,000 fans there for Oklahoma State. And I would bet 15,000 of them were from Oklahoma State. I just I can't figure out why they're not drawn. And I think it's killing them in the recruiting because kids that have the opportunity to play in front of 100,000 fans are going to go to Happy Valley. And we're just, it's just not enabling us to bring the, yeah. bring the big kids in. I'm going to hang up and listen to what you have to say. Well, first of all, you're right. I mean, if you're a recruit and you came in and you went to that atmosphere last week and you're probably comparing it to others – uh, you're at a big disadvantage if you're Pitt. And all I saw last week all over national highlights were Pitt fans falling asleep in the stands. You know, it's about winning uh, more than anything else. The other thing is you're in a different kind of town. People will say, and we brought this argument up last week, Kansas State has turned their program around. That's all they got in that town. There's no professional sports teams. Here you have three. So you tap out of corporate money potentially. You tap out of people who only have so much money to spend on a budget. The way you got to get them in here is by winning consistently. And this is why when teams like Oklahoma State come in, you got to do much better what they did. 
what's wrong with beating them at home once in a while? But that affects recruiting. It is a, it's, it's been going on for many years. And, uh, you know, the bottom line is, to me, the only way out is to recruit better, get better players, and win. But that's, that's difficult to do right here for some reason. Anyway, we got to go to a break. We have Randy, Mark, Karen, and Mark on the line. We'll get to those calls when we return right here on Pittsburgh CW.